Welcome to the Windows 10 Migration Project. This is the general information session. So today we're going to discuss the why we go going to migrate to Windows 10, some benefits, new features, uh, we'll give you a rollout schedule, and there will be a demonstration, and we'll provide you with a customer portal uh, for questions and answers and additional information toward the end of this presentation. So why migrate to Windows 10? Well, Windows 7 is approaching its end of life. Uh, we've had Windows 8, and then we've had Windows 8.1 come out, and now Windows 10 has been out for a while. So <clears throat> what's the big advantage of Windows 10? Well, Windows 10 has advanced security built into the operating system itself. Uh, it's designed in a way that's more secure than Windows 7 and previous versions have been. Um, it's, you know, cybersecurity is a big push, and it has been for the last few years, and it's just getting more and more of an uh, information security issue for all large businesses and, and, and government agencies. Uh, Windows 10 also provides advanced uh, or increased for efficiency for PCs. Um, this, you know, gives you a better, uh, a better performance with older hardware even. Um, some older hardware, lots of older hardware we've tested has actually run better on Windows 10 than it did on Windows 7. Um, it's got the same style of menus. It has incorporated some of the menus and different features from 8.1, but I'll discuss that later. Uh, but in any case, the, um, some of the benefits, uh, which I'll discuss in a few minutes here, are definitely part of why we're migrating to Windows 10. So the benefits, <coughs> excuse me, so the ability to securely and easily access <coughs> your data from anywhere. Uh, Windows 10 is designed to work with Office 365 and Skype and new, you know, the new offerings uh, from Microsoft. A lot of this is cloud-based, and Windows 10 is designed uh, in the core of it to operate with these new versions of Office. And your access to data anywhere means that you can, like, be at home, open up Word, log in with your network login like you would at work, and you'll have what they call a OneDrive, which will be able to give you access to your documents from home, or if you're at Starbucks on their Wi-Fi, any place you're at, it's going to give you that instant, easy access to your data from anywhere. It delivers a new platform that is going to protect us against security, modern security threats. Uh, this is uh, some of the cybersecurity stuff I mentioned. In fact, I'm going to show you a video here in just a moment that kind of gives you a little more information on that. And improved, improved effectiveness and efficiencies. Uh, the menus are basically the same as Windows 7. You're not going to see a huge difference. You've still got the start button. Everything operates in the same manner as Windows 7 did. Uh, you do have some new things. There's actually some quick access tiles, which is even easier than Windows 7. And you're going to see a lot of the same stuff, if not uh, very similar. So it's uh, definitely improved in a lot of ways. Um, some of the benefits for the IT, for over reducing support costs for IT is um, one of the features. The primary one is that automated updating is going to help us on the back end that frees up our time to spend more time helping our customers, and it also will provide us with the um, with the ease of implementing Windows 10 because it does just upgrade the operating system. It literally keeps all of your same settings and all of your applications don't have to be reinstalled. They're already still there. They're all configured the way you had them. It makes it a nice, this is going to be a nice, easy migration for the most part. Most hardware will be able to just be upgraded in place and have that very easy swap over. So now I'm going to take just a moment here, and I'm going to jump out of this, and I'm going to jump over to show you a video that 
discusses cybersecurity. Every day, this is how America comes under attack. This is war. There's no other way to really describe it. Security firms in Silicon Valley are trying to help the government fight the bombardment of these cyber attacks, which the U.S. intelligence community now says Trump terrorism is the number one threat to the United States. We are all very, very vulnerable. Phyllis Schnett has been running the Department of Homeland Security Cyber Fighting Center for just over a year. Recently, the Associated Press got a rare glimpse inside its online defense nerve center. Whether it's games or automobiles or access to information or learning, all that creates more things that are connected. And that has grown faster than previous risk calculations and security investments were growing. A review by the AP found the number of reported cyber incidents on federal networks is up 70% from under 30,000 in 2009 to nearly 50,000 in 2013. Everything from Social Security numbers to Pentagon secrets is at risk. Mark Mayfred knows the government's vulnerabilities better than most. As a teen hacker, he was raided by the FBI after successfully breaking into federal computer systems most anti-government slogan. Guys with guns coming over you know, the back fence, the front door. A decade later, his company now helps agencies protect themselves from cyber attacks. The government, like most other things, very, very slow moving and very slow moving to adopt uh, new technologies, uh, new security standards. But more than half the cyber incidents are partly to blame on government employees themselves who inadvertently click on malicious links or leave their cell phones unattended. Anything that you're storing on the app can be taken by the attacker. This hacker at a recent cybersecurity convention in Las Vegas shows how to hack into a federal government application on a stolen cell phone in just minutes. Once you're at this level of introspection into the app, being able to look into the data, the methods, the entire architecture of the app, you have full control. One of the biggest hurdles encountering the growing pool of attackers is convincing more young programmers to pursue careers in cybersecurity. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> So Windows 10, uh, one of the new features in Windows 10 that's part of the increased security is that it actually, instead of folder level protection that we have on our network, this actually can generate a file level protection. So it actually can, it can set security on individual files, which is one of the things that leads into the OneDrive that we're going to have coming um, that Windows 10 is compatible with. You'll find more about that soon. Um, it provides us with a single platform for all of our devices, we have, uh, there's Windows 10 smartphones out there. There's uh, tablets that run Windows 10. You have laptops and, and then, of course, desktops. Uh, so you have a single platform across devices. Um, you know, in the future or at home, if you have a Windows 10 cell phone, you can, you'd can you be able to synchronize that with your, like your calendars would be synchronized with your desktop automatically. Uh, the deployment features I may have mentioned earlier here short, briefly was um, no need to wipe and reinstall everything from scratch. It's a, a much shorter time frame to upgrade a computer from Windows 7 to Windows 10 than it was to upgrade before. You had to basically w format the hard drive, wipe it completely out, install the operating system from scratch, then install every single application after that. And even in an automated process, it still only can install the apps one at a time. So. You're looking at a huge time savings here uh, on top of the fact that you don't have to reconfigure every single application to the way you had it. Your Outlook will still be configured the same way it was. So it's a, a big time saver for the customers, for you, the customers, as well as for the IT department. Um, Skype for Business and Microsoft Office 365 uh, is definitely, uh, it, you know, Windows 10 is compatible with those and was designed to work with those. Um, those are things that are coming in the future. We're starting our uh, Windows or Microsoft Office 365 G, which is for the government cloud. That's going to start in this summer, probably July 1. <coughs> Pardon me. 
um, improved automated update process um, for security and operations. So what this means is you're going to have those security patches and those operational patches that come out occasionally from Microsoft. It's going to be an automated process that runs in the back end. And the most we'll see is maybe a reboot here and there from our systems. So that is the um, some of the nice new features from Windows 10. There's more, and we're going to have more of those, uh, more information on our customer portal, which I'll talk more about in just a second here. So the Windows 10 rollout schedule, um, it's currently March 2nd, and we're starting the rollout to the DWR users this uh, at the end of this week. So there will be emails going out to notify people when you're being migrated and, and uh, upgraded to Windows 10. There is also going to be a customer portal open to all of you very, very soon, and it will have all that information on the rollout schedules looking ahead. So if you don't get an email, you can always go to current, go to the community pages, and look at the Windows 10 project. Um, there's more information coming, and we're planning on being done by the end of April. So we may have some cleanup work to do in the first part of May, but for the most part, this rollout should be complete by the end of April. And we do have a demo that is a separate file on our community page uh, on the Windows 10 project. We'll see if we can get it attached here, but it's a de it's a demonstration of all of the actual Windows 10 desktop you're going to see, and you'll be able to view that on the community page on the Windows 10 project page. So, uh, for addi additional information, here's the information on going to you go to the current intranet site that we have. That's already in process. That's been up for a while, and once you go there, look for the community menu on current, and there will be a Windows 10 portal there very, very soon. Uh, I'm hoping by the end of this week. If you have any questions beyond this or you have problems getting to this page, um, the number at the bottom of the screen there, write that down. That's the IT Service Center number. Most of you probably already have that. It's already published. And I'll give you a minute to copy that down. Also, uh, questions and answers. We're going to have a we have a questions and answers page that's that will be available also on the portal. So look here for the Windows 10 portal. Look for the commonly uh, frequently asked questions FAQs, and that will be posted there as well. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Again, if you have any questions, give us a call. And I hope you have a great day.